Hello, I am Professor Natarajan. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, please speak something. Let me see whether your sound is coming. So good morning. Very good morning. Sir, I'm Very, good. Very yes. good morning, ma'am. Very good morning, sir. Good morning. Myself, Dr. Anita Patel, talking from Gujarat. Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so nice to see you. I'm happy. <laughs> you are so, so active to... on... Uh, I'm able to see you so are many people active from on, uh... different parts of India now. <laughs> Yes, yes, that yes, is the beauty yes. of Unnad Bharat Abhiyan that we connect from every part of India. <laughs> yes. So th this would be our, you are, uh, we are grateful that uh, in spite of your busy schedule, you no, came no, here. No, no busy schedule, no busy schedule. <laughs> Summer vacation, Aram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here, vacation is going on, so it's... Uh, so, sir, I'm also from Manasli Vidya Yes. Enough. Time we can uh, always uh, communicate with each other, and uh, it's the best part of it. Uh, we can make yeah, good. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you're giving yeah. me some holiday homework. Yeah. <laughs> yeah true, true, holiday homework. <laughs> uh, Sneha, please start uh, because it's a Zoom meeting. Na? 45 minutes, we have to finish. Sneha? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Uh, namaste and a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, on the for the webinar on lifestyle for environment. So I would like to introduce our speaker for today, uh, Dr. B. R. Natarajan. He is an academic, uh, esteemed academic with over 30 years of experience in engineering and uh, e uh, education and leadership. And he is uh, currently serving as a uh, head of the department for chemical engineering and a professor at Banasali Vidyapit. So, sir, a very warm welcome to you and over to you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. And wonderful, you know, uh, having this opportunity of uh, your, uh, what is that, uh, RCI, Regional Coordination, Coordinating Institute from MNIT for this uh, uh, session, which you have organized. I'm, so proud to be a participant in this and uh, uh, lifestyle for environment. <laughs> uh, let's uh, have a go at it. Like, let's quickly get what is lifestyle? Uh, the habits, attitudes, taste, moral standards, economic level, which put together make a particular way of living. We call it as lifestyle. Environment, everything except you is environment. Put yourself aside. Whatever is 
other than you is the environment. Now, where does lifestyle for environment come into picture? Of course, everybody has the lifestyle, which is uh, individualistic. And uh, to an extent, the lifestyle is decided by the level of education also, because the lifestyle of an educated person and a less educated and uneducated person is definitely different. But education brings you not only the hard skills, but also some degree of soft skills, which uh, determine your uh, lifestyle. And some of these uh, um, soft skills, definitely depending upon the level at which the person has, will determine the impact on the environment. Now, some of the soft skills, which I would uh, quickly like to mention are empathy, that is understanding the other person, negotiation, when in uh, conflict, how to negotiate, public speaking, relationship building, um, leadership, time management. Uh, time management, I'll put a stress, one must know the difference between what is urgent and what is important, because many things both are same, but they are not same. What is important may not be urgent, and what is urgent may not be important. And when something is urgent and important, then you do it immediately. When something is highly urgent, but less important, then you may schedule it at some other time. When something is uh, less important, but highly urgent, you may delegate it to some other person. When it is not important and not urgent, you just don't do it. Because all these soft skills are going to have some influence or other on the environment, right? The way you behave. And also some of the um, additional soft skills which come into an individual in deciding his personality and lifestyle. Um, I'll put it as conflict management asset. Every individual is in conflict with the environment. You want to do something and the environment doesn't allow it to happen. Like you want to carry plastic all over, but the environment says, don't do it. Conflict management, stress management, then come creativity, and then comes the persuasion. How you persuade others also to be part of uh, protecting the environment uh, and also collaboration. Um, see, maintaining the environment is not an individualistic affair. It has to be a collaborative effort. So collaboration is also a soft skill and uh, adaptability. When the circumstance, the environment is not constant, it keeps changing. And when the environment changes, how you adapt to yourself. Adaptability is another soft skill which determines your personality and, and uh, lifestyle. And finally, emotional intelligence, understanding who you are, what you are, what is your strength and weakness. So this is about uh, how the soft skills influence the personality and lifestyle of a person. Finally, everything, everybody wants to do something or other to stay happy, right? And sometimes you do things to be happy yourself, but that's not happy for the environment, right? So again, let's just look at it. Happiness, if you put it as a score out of 100, then the set standard, the set condition is 50 out of 100. Then uh, circumstances, special circumstances add 10%. 40% of the happiness score is under your control. Right, fifty percent is decided by your genetics, and ten percent by circumstances. Like when you get married, you feel happy. That doesn't mean you get married every day, right? Or when you go and have a Tirupati Balaji darshan, standing in a queue for many hours, you feel happy, right? But that doesn't mean you can have it. These are special circumstances. That's only ten percent of the score of happiness. The forty percent is what is in your control, which can influence your lifestyle as well as its impact on the environment. And in a nutshell, this voluntary control is all about. Jo ho gaya, jaane do. Let it go. What is coming, accept it, and be grateful to what happened and what going to happen. So these three decide the voluntary control. Letting it go, accepting what is coming, and be grateful to what happened and what going to happen. Right? So this 40% is what is going to determine your happiness 
uh, score and because the other 50 and 10 are more or less, they know, fixed. And it is the 40% which is going to boost your happiness score, which will decide your personality, lifestyle, and subsequently the impact on the environment. Now, we have already put two things, lifestyle, environment, and genetics. Because we have already mentioned that happiness, 50% of it is decided by your DNA, which you and I cannot change now. Right? So, it's not like changing your genes, you know, which you wear, but these genes can't be changed. Right? So, what is the intersection? There is a new field which has now come up, which is the interrelation of genetics, lifestyle, and environment. That is epigenetics. This is a very field which is uh, being talked about in a big way. Epigenetics is the intersection of genetics, lifestyle, and environment. A lot of research is uh, going on in this. And to quickly understand what is happiness, because our lifestyle we want to do so that the way we dress, the way we eat, the way we talk, the way we behave is all to show that we are happy. And there are many definitions of happiness. Happiness is just not about you know, laughing and you know smiling around. But uh, I like the definition given by the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. He has put happiness in a very simple way. Happiness is what when what you think, what you speak, and what you do are in harmony. What you think, what you speak, and what you do are in harmony, then happiness results. And in many people, this is not in harmony. You think something, you speak something, and you do something else. Right? And when there is a mismatch, there is no happiness coming round. Now, to get a happiness, to influence your lifestyle. I'm focusing on lifestyle because ultimately the lifestyle is what is going to impact the environment. So to uh, achieve, uh, improve your happiness, it doesn't mean you go to a pharmacist and buy happiness drugs or something like that. That's no good. And happiness is just decided in the human system by four hormones. Close. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphin. And you don't have to go to a shop to buy dopa, oxytocin, etc. Your own behavior will generate oxytocin, uh, this dose, dopamine, etc. And uh, to put it in a nutshell, dopamine, when you set a goal and go about achieving it, your body generates hormone. Dopamine, and uh, when you have trust and belief and uh, um, the element of trust, that brings uh, oxytocin into the picture. Like when you pet um, uh, when, when you pat your pet, then you know you oxytocin is generated. It's as simple as that. When you have a massage, oxytocin is generated, right? There. And similarly, uh, for serotonin, self confidence is what generates uh, people who are not confident. Serotonin is gone. They are not happy. People who have self confidence, serotonin dose is there in the system enough. And finally, endorphin is about doing exercise and you know meditation etc and those who do it that's the painkiller serotonin uh, endorphin so those dopamine oxytocin serotonin and endorphin is there in the system to bring your happiness now i understand that this lifestyle for environment is a scheme which is uh, spearheaded by none other than india in the global environment after the november 2021 global conference uh, which is spearheaded by our own Prime Minister, and um, there's a website for it, the Lifestyle for Environment. I myself went into the website uh, to see, and uh, I took a plate. I'm so proud of it. And the Prime Minister, when he administered this life, uh, Lifestyle for Environment, had mentioned that out of the 8 billion population in the world, today's world population is 8 billion, and if just 1 billion out of this 8 billion come forward and decide to adopt lifestyle for environment, we have tackled 20% of the world's, you know, uh, environmental problem. And this 1 billion can come, can come just out of India. Our, our population is already 1.4, you know, 
and uh, i just out of curiosity uh, sorry to interrupt you sir hello yes hello yeah natrajan sir hello yes sir some, yeah. some problem with the volume aap mic ke paas rakhenge aap uh, people are saying in the chat that they are it's not audible to them it's not can, uh, can you hear me now uh, not much sir hello hello yes sir it's not audible is volume is low hello hello yes sir yes sir volume is low yes sir it is audible but volume is very low uh, just one thing i'm just checking you know whether i can increase it some more no it maximum uh, <coughs> can you hear me now uh, yes sir better okay now this lifestyle for environment website i went to took the plate and just looked at the analytics it just that about um, not even 7 lakh people from india have taken the split for lifestyle for environment not even 7 lakh out of this 1.4 billion population and um, uh, looking at uh, the statistic it says 65% 65% of the people who took the split are male and 35% are females the men are showing probably more concern in lifestyle for environment than the women and um, coming to the age wise break up is further surprising the age group 10 to 20 23% have taken the split and age group 20 to 45 20 to 45 uh, let's put it in the uh, youth group that's about um, 64% that's very interesting the youth are showing concern lifestyle for the environment and 45 to 60 do good day okay ja rahe that is 11.8% and greater than 60 senior citizen not even 0.5 right so senior citizen <laughs> i think they have lived their life lifestyle for environment is of no concern to them and uh, i am happy that i added some number to the uh, senior citizens you know enrollment for lifestyle for environment today right so in the age group you see the youth which is the uh, uh, dominating 65% have shown concern lifestyle for the environment and uh, uh, coming to some more aspects those who don't understand environment you need not go to harvard and cambridge to find out what is environment there is a saying in india bhagavad gita has answer for every doubt you have in fact i just went through some of the chapters of bhagavad gita and i found the whole lot of shlokas which focus on environment i mean kurukshetra and you know arjun and krishna and environment is there in many of the shlokas uh, to quickly tell 3 point chapter 3 14 chapter 3 27 chapter 7 4 5 6 7 8 shlokas chapter 9 7 8 10 10 chapter 13 19 and 20 uh, 20 21 chapter 14 Shloka three and four, chapter seventeen, uh, six, seven, eight, and I was particularly impressed by the chapter three, shloka twenty-seven, which I would like to share with you. Prakarte kriya manani guna karma ani arvacha aham aham kar aham kar vimuktatma kartatma miti manyate. This tells that. what you do impact the environment and it is nature which decides what you do and nature behaves the way you behave right so the very interesting shloka and um, uh, coming to today newspaper of course uh, the month of uh, june is very important for the environmentalist june 5th we all know is world environment day and this year the focus is on uh, uh, no plastic that is the uh, Uh, i think you uh, know uh, get rid of plastic that is the theme of uh, this year but um, it also happened that today june 2nd is also in the environmental calendar as uh, world peatland day right everybody knows wetland uh, the water of bodies which uh, are very important for the ecosystem and uh, the wetland day is celebrated every year on february 2nd but many may not know that the peatland day p e a t peatland day is celebrated on june 2nd every year and peatlands 
there are only 3 to 4 percent of the land in the whole world and the 3 to 4 percent is uh, taking care of one third of the carbon one third of the carbon is taken care of by this peatland unfortunately most of the peatland is in uh, usa europe russia etc there are not many in uh, the this part of the hemisphere but uh, whatever said peatland day that happened to be today and uh, tomorrow is another environmentally significant day that is the world cycle day and uh, there's some very interesting information about uh, the cycle day which i would like to uh, share with you uh, uh, see when i became a senior citizen i was joined banastri vidya peel and i went for a medical checkup and my doctor told that um, uh, uh, as you grow old, your limbs become weak, and uh, I suggest you have an exercise cycle at your home, and you use it regularly. This is what the doctor told. And um, I found that um, uh, from the quarter where I was staying in Banasthali VPAP, uh, my department was about a kilometer away, and I was wondering that every day I had to do four kilometers going in the morning, coming back in the evening, and up down during lunch, etc. I thought whether I should have a two-wheeler for doing it or not. And uh, then I found that uh, the nearest petrol pump to the campus was about five kilometers away. And I realized that just to fill my tank in the two-wheeler, I had to spend 10 kilometers of ride. And I thought I must do different. So I caught hold of some of my students whom I taught over the last three decades and told them that do something for me. I want a cycle which will double as the exercise cycle. And when I want, it can drive. And when I feel tired, it should run on a battery. Right. So they designed it and gave me. And uh, I'm using it. Right. And my cycle is very popular in the campus. A lot of, you know, kids, you know, take a ride in the cycle. And um, that's it. But over and above this, today you see, you know, to have a holiday, uh, we all think, you know, uh, uh, go for a global tour, uh, Europe, etc., and book our ticket, hotel, and whatnot. But I found in Banansali, I found a professor, Professor Hamza Wagni Singh, who teaches German there. And you know how she went on to see the world? She just took her cycle and did the world tour on cycle. Very impressed. Right. So imagine if she had flown all over the world, how much of you know carbon would have got added to the system? And not she with her husband and her daughter did a global tour on cycle. Hats off to you, Professor. Like my e-bike is, you know, um, uh, no big deal. When I look at that, uh, I can't do a world tour on my cycle because I can't go around charging it every now and then. Right. Uh, it can only last about 30 kilometers a charge. Right. So that's it. And uh, that's World Bicycle Day tomorrow. And uh, coming to the June 5th World Environment Day, uh, this year the focus is on peak plastic pollution. Right. Uh, Big plastic pollution, and we all know that uh, the global consensus on beating the plastic pollution is to go for a circular economy. And the circular economy says eliminate, get rid of the plastic which you don't want, and innovate, find out plastic which are biodegradable and long lasting and will not harm the environment, and um, circulate, right? Don't uh, use and throw and see how much it can be recycled and reused, circulated. Right. Eliminate, innovate, and circulate. That is the mantra for uh, protecting the environment from the uh, plastic uh, problem. And the plastic problem is not as simple as that. Uh, let me just, you know, uh, take a sip of water. See, I'm carrying my water in a stainless steel bottle. But today, the lifestyle, many people go around carrying plastic bottles. That's a problem. And you see, you know, you have an idea. One million plastic bottles, not one or two, one million plastic bottles are bought every minute. Every minute, one, billion, one million plastic bottles are bought. 500 billion plastic bags are being sold every year. 13 million tons of plastic is being dumped into the oceans every year. 17 million barrels of oil is being used for the plastic production. Huge! 500 billion plastic bags every year. 1 million plastic bottles every 
villain. Right? And uh, plastic, what is the crime? They take 100 years to degrade in the soil. And that's where the problem comes. And more, 50% of the consumer plastic, right from your plastic bag, carry bag, to the plastic bottle where you carry water and cool drink, they are uh, single use plastic, SUP, single use plastic. And the villain in plastic is not all plastic. Some plastics are good, required. And the single use plastic is where the crime is. And um, all effort goes into settling this 50% uh, of this uh, single use plastic usage. And 10% um, of the waste generated by humans is plastics. Right. So it's a big issue. I'm sure um, people should uh, put their head together in um, finding out how best things can be done. Now, today I'm reading the newspaper. Of course, there's all news of all kinds, but there was one news which caught my attention. Let me share it with you. Seven out of eight climate red line have already been breached by the human population. Let me tell it again. Seven out of eight climate red line. So the intellectuals of the world have drawn eight red lines right, for the climate of the world. Out of the eight, seven already breached. Only one is left. Right. And um, what are these red lines? Safe and just climate, functional integrity, levels of surface water, levels of groundwater, content of nitrogen, content of phosphorus, right, and aerosol. We have breathed these all. Aerosol with some amount of um, uh, control, uh, I would say partly breathed, not fully breathed, because uh, after the ozone hole episode, we are all very clear about the aerosol. So it partly breathed. And the only thing that is uh, not yet breathed is safe, but not uh, just climate. Right? That is the change in 1.5 degrees centigrade uh, in the global temperature. That's the one which is yet to be breathed. And I don't think uh, it will take a long way to breathe that also. Already out of eight red lines, seven are gone. The eighth one is what is hanging. And we have uh, a challenge on our head for uh, tackling this. Now, at Banastali, uh, I am in the chemical engineering department, but most people look chemical engineering as the villain in a super hit film. Right? What is this? Because they think it is a chemical engineer who caused all the pollution. Yes, we made the fertilizer, we made the chemicals, we made the fuel for the automobiles. But that's what wanted in the 70s and 80s, when the world was struggling for food and transport, the chemical engineers developed these things. And we were all, you know, um, uh, uh, put on a pedestal for doing it in the 70s and 80s. But when the lifestyle changed, people started raising finger at the chemical engineers and said that they are the villain. And believe me, the chemical engineer will get back and put the environment back in group, right? If we did something that was to meet the challenge at that point of time, now the challenge is different, we'll do it. And uh, uh, I'm happy that Banasali has a very active uh, school of air sciences where geography, geology, and environment, et cetera, are taught. And I have many friends and colleagues there. And uh, one such colleague I interacted a uh, day back, uh, Dr. Arushi Rana, who told me something very interesting, which I would like to share with you all. That is the, the sacred groves of Meghalaya, right? The sacred groves of Meghalaya, especially the Moplong one, uh, where there are 700 year old, 700 year old tree, still not one or two years, 700 year old trees are there in the sacred groves of Meghalaya, and they are spread over about thousand five kilometers and there are 125 such sacred groves in Meghalaya and the local people worship it, protect it, the visitors come and they don't spoil it. 
The sacred groves of Meghalaya, the lifestyle of the people there have decided, have, have determined how the environment is conserved. So I'm thankful to Dr. Arushi Rana for uh, highlighting me about the uh, sacred groves of Meghalaya. Uh, I had a colleague a few years back with whom I closely worked with uh, in 2010. That is uh, Dr. Rajiv Lochan Bishnoi. And I always heard about the Bishnois are uh, great people in conserving the environment. So my interaction with uh, Rajiv Lochan Bishnoi, who is right now director of the Jammu Kashmir uh, Bank, uh, uh, told me that uh, there are uh, 29 rules of principles for the Bishnoi community. And I'm not going to read out all the 29, but two of them are important from the 29 rules of the Bishnoi community. That is, don't cut green trees. Right, don't cut green trees. That is one of the principles. And protect the animal, whatever the animal be. Right. Otherwise, imagine the chinkaras would have been killed by all the Bollywood superstars long back. Right. So, hat off to the Bishnoi community for uh, bringing a particular set of rules and lifestyle by which the environment is protected. I wish every village, every district has some Bishnoi who will ensure that the environmental method of conservation is done. And probably we should ship some people from the sacred groves of Maya to bring this consciousness across the country to make more sacred groves across um, India. So we can uh, go on and on and on. And um, uh, the main problem is uh, why is our lifestyle influencing? Um, there's some philosopher, Kukera, I think, who told that uh, winners don't do different things, they do things differently. So uh, in the lifestyle, you keep doing things different. You keep doing different things and also differently. And without bothering about uh, what are the consequences, right? No wonder God has given each of us three shaktis. Icha shakti, kriya shakti, and nyan shakti, right? Icha shakti gives you the power to dream, power to desire, right? And kriya shakti tells your power to act. And nyan shakti tells your power to absorb knowledge and wisdom. Right. But when these three do not go in order, then we are in trouble. Your Icha Shakti says, do something, and that Nyan Shakti probably doesn't allow it. So, conflict with the environment. And you do something that is Kriya Shakti, which is not in synchrony with the, the Nyan Shakti. So, that goes against the environment. So, like I told you, that uh, the lifestyle, environment, and genetic. They form a, a symphony. Similarly, the Icha Shakti, Kriya Shakti, and Nyan Shakti should work in a symphony so that the environment is duly protected. And when it comes to celebrating a birthday, a anniversary, and occasion, we all lift, you know, a big, big gift boxes and give it to the person. And some people accept it. Some people uh, probably uh, refuse to accept saying that I don't accept gifts. <laughs> but uh, whatever be it be, I suggest that the lifestyle should switch over to giving gifts, not by those big, big boxes, but by plants, right? And uh, today people live in apartments where there is no garden and no greenery. And uh, you have only a balcony and a terrace garden. And I'm sure this um, uh, gifting plan is going to be, uh, should be adopted as a lifestyle for all people across all section. Uh, for example, I understand the uh, fiddle leaf big plant, big plant is a highly desired one. Uh, there are oxygen generators uh, in the house and uh, the bamboo palm, the jade plant, the African violet, even aloe vera, right? So all these uh, uh, gifting plants should become uh, everybody's the say for uh, changing the lifestyle, which protects the environment and bring the good ambience to the person receiving it. And um, uh, the gift you give uh, is probably a card or some uh, item which goes chucked in the uh, showcase uh, and not looked into, whereas the plants live. So gifting plan is something which is uh, worth adopting. and. Uh, 
I must also tell you that last year I had undertaken the uh, challenge of Dev Kapna Desh, in which 50 locations in India I saw in within one month, uh, ranging from Maharashtra to Tamil Nadu to Haryana. And uh, I went about 15 places, and I was amazed to see that in most of the places I visited, the rural people were deploying solar energy in a bigger way. The highway, Dabas, were solar powered. The petrol pumps in the highway were all solar powered. And many rural houses, I saw solar panel on top as compared to the urban areas. Right. So I think um, uh, more urban areas also should switch over to solar. That was my observation after this uh, take up na date where I a whirlwind tour of 15 places in the country across Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, and um, Delhi and Haryana, I did last year. And coming to this year, I took up another challenge, Bharatiya Rail Garvyatra. My dad has been a railway employee for a lifetime. I thought I must spend a few days in train uh, uh, for my life. And I decided to do 8,000 kilometers traveling in train, 8,000 kilometers. I did it from May 1st to May 10th, that nine days and nine nights in Navratra. And I boarded a train at Jaipur, got down at Gauhati, boarded a train at Gauhati, got down at Trivandrum, boarded a train at Trivandrum, got down at Jaipur. Total 8,000 kilometers. I crisscrossed 15 states of India, right from um, Rajasthan, New P, Bihar, Assam, West Bengal, Orissa, um, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Pondicherry, Karnataka, Goa, uh, Maharashtra, right, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh. Right, it was amazing. But what I want to tell is that most of the route, the 8,000 kilometers I traveled, was electrified, electric train. And that makes a difference. Right, uh, the electric trains are uh, more environment friendly. Of course, there's a different issue how the electricity was generated, but in coming time, most of the electricity used for the railway running will also come from green sources like uh, hydrogen, hydropower, and wind power, etc. And I was amazed to see the amount of uh, windmills generating electricity near the Kanyakumari and in the Gujarat coast, etc. So, uh, again, these are all small issues, uh, the deployment of solar and the deployment of uh, alternate sources of energy should become widespread. That's uh, 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 my say on uh, this topic. And uh, coming to, we must also switch over uh, the fuel from uh, the present petrol, which is uh, costing not only money and foreign exchange, uh, how much of alcohol can be made, 10%, 20%, that is a catch all which Brazil has done. India should go in a big way to put you know, this into picture for tackling the transport sector, right? And uh, the alcohol should come from uh, the uh, farm waste, right? That is agricultural waste, etc., which uh, is another uh, uh, big way it can be done. And uh, I'm sure in the coming time, the youth of the nation, uh, we already saw out of the 7 lakh people who have taken the pledge, 65% uh, are youth in the age group 20 to 45. Uh, they will drive the need for this, and we will get uh, uh, probably uh, more um, hydrogen cars and uh, you know hydrogen driven transport and uh, whatnot. So we can go on and on and on on this, but um, ultimately, certain decisions have to be taken at the individual level at the family level and at the community level, then at the national level, then at the global level. Then only this problem of environment protection can be tackled. It's not you and me alone. It is we all put together only can handle this problem. So this lifestyle for environment is really a challenge. And um, when there is no challenge, then there is no fun in life and we must face it. And I'm sure we are going to face it in the by light that is only right. So uh, uh, what I'm saying is that 
It is a collective responsibility of each one of us uh, to save the environment by adjusting our lifestyle, influencing the others, and uh, go by the pledge that was administered. I pledge to make any possible changes in my daily life which will be able to protect the environment. I commit to continuously remind my friends, my family, and others about the importance of environment, uh, environment friendly habit. And I pledge to serve as an example and an ambassador of how an environmental lifestyle is feasible and enjoyable. Right. So I suggest that more people do take the pledge and adhere to the pledge. Right. So thank you all. And uh, I'm grateful to the organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity for addressing everyone. So if anyone would like to have a query or something, I'm willing to take it. That's my presentation. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Natarajan, sir. We take the yeah. we all here take the place that will not uh, means will minimize the use of, of uh, plastic at home as well as outside as a tourist. And that's very good uh, lecture we have uh, gone through and lots of takeaways for all of us. And uh, we would like to uh, collaborate with you in future as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, Sneha. Yes. Please take over. Yes, sir. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your valuable insights and your perspective and for uh, connecting all the topics like lifestyle and environment and genetics and also encouraging us to take the pledge. And uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you for giving your valuable time. And uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, namaste. Have a great day. Thanks to everyone as well. Thanks to participants. Sneha. So thank thank you NCI as well for giving us the opportunity to organizing this uh, event, and uh, this will be available on YouTube for others uh, later. One can see. So we'll share the YouTube link as well, sir, with you. You can share amongst the peers and the students as well. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <laughs>